everyone, so welcome back. I'll be taking a look today at my ignition controls button box. This is specifically the NA2 EX E6 model. I have no idea what any of that stands for, but this is one of the most premium button boxes I think pretty much available in the sim racing industry today, outside of maybe some other models or something that somebody has made. Um, but I think, you know, consumer ready to ready made product, I would say from what I've seen in the market, this is pretty much at the top end. So I'm going to share all the details with you and we'll kind of dive in as to why I purchased this button box. You know, do I recommend it? And then you can kind of formulate your own decision on this. So let's start by discussing the build quality. So the the, bu the button box is handcrafted in Poland. It's using high quality steel and aluminum, which ensures, you know, its durability and finish. So unlike 3D printed boxes, this one is probably going to be more uh, robust and built to withstand, you know, pretty much anything. But, you know, when we're looking at a button box, you know, once it's mounted to your rig, I don't think you have to worry too much about it, you know, having to withstand certain things, even if you have a motion rig or things moving around. You know, I think the enclosure is not so important, but when it comes to, you know, the buttons and the rotary knobs and things like that or the switches, you know, I think build quality is important there if this is something that you want to last. So taking a look at the craftsmanship, and, and that's what I really appreciated about this button box. You know, the all metal enclosure features an aluminum top plate and a steel casing. So it feels very solid, very premium. Um, what I also appreciate is the powder coated finish. It adds a really nice extra touch to it. So it's clear that Ignition Controls has put a lot of effort into creating this product um, that not only performs really well, but it also looks really good. So, you know, part of the reason I spent, you know, the money on something like this, which you know, costs a lot more than some of the other models out there is just because, you know, overall it just fit the the, the aesthetic that I wanted on my rig, um, the look and feel. You know, for me personally, I, I do like the things that I interact with on my sim racing setup, all to feel and have a premium look. There's, there's nothing like, you know, touching a metal product or something that feels, you know, a bit more automotive grade, which, you know, kind of just helps with the immersion for me. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. That may not be important to everyone else, but, you know, I appreciate a product that that is really well made and, I, and I'm not afraid to spend an extra money on something like that. So let's talk about the buttons. So on the box, you've got premium quality buttons. They, they are like some of the best buttons I feel I've felt sorry on on a steering wheel or on a button box ever. Like the the click action of it is just so satisfying. It's just such a, a tactile feeling like you. It, there's no movement in the button and it's just the actuation is just honestly I it's, it's something you have to experience and feel um, but hopefully you can pick up from the sound on the on the camera but um, the knobs too like everything just feels really nice really tactile so they have the buttons have kind of like a conclave surface so it just enhances that you know feeling when you're when you're touching it it also makes it pretty easy for making precise inputs as well uh, if you're paying attention to the road so what I also liked about this button box is I was looking for something that had some backlit buttons, but I just wanted it to be very subtle just so that when I'm racing in, in, you know, in the dark here with the lights off, you know, I can still see the buttons, but I didn't want it to kind of overpower the rest of the setup. So what's really nice is there's a little switch here actually that you can turn off and on the lights. So if you don't want them on, you can just flip that switch and that turns off the, the light. So really nice having that, um, there just adds a really cool, you know, visual element to to the setup. So, and if you're someone who likes, you know, precise in-game changes and adjustments, you're gonna love these rotary encoders. Like they, they're not stiff enough that it's hard to press, but you can't accidentally um, turn, you know, or make an adjustment in air. Um, they just feel so really solid, really nice um, to use. So these are industrial grade CTS encoders. Um, so very accurate and you can fine tune any of your settings. You know, some of these I haven't, I haven't even mapped yet, to be honest. Um, but for mapping things like, you know, traction control or ABS, or maybe you want to control the volume um, on your PC. So you can pretty much do whatever you want. You've got six of those and then you've got um, 10 of the, the tactile buttons here. So the, the other notable feature on here is this, it's like a four way joystick. Um, so it's almost like a giant funky switch and I just, I love the size of this because it's just so easy to use. So if you wanted to use this to navigate, you know, controls or an MFD or something like that, um, it just feels really solid and you can feel the, the click and know exactly 
where you're pressing and the size is perfect. Now, you can't press in or anything like that. So it's not really like a, a seven way funky switch. It's more of like a four way joystick switch, I guess. So there's technically um, four inputs on it. So it's, and, and notes that note that it's not an analog joystick, but it does offer um, a good range of functionality. Um, now in total, you have 32 inputs all together on this box, including these switches here as well. So, um, you know, you've got, these are all um, not momentary switches, but you know, stationary switches. So you've got a latching one here and you've got another one here and then you've got this one here. And when you flip this, there's actually a light that, that flashes. So just so you know that that's engaged, I typically actually use this as my ignition, but because it's not a momentary switch, I'll do ignition, hit start, and then turn that off again so that it kind of resets the button. Um, I think there might be a way to get around that in something like iRacing, but I haven't really lo looked into it too much, but uh, for the most part, it's fine. And honestly, it, once it's flashing, it kind of reminds me that it's still on, so I'll turn it off because that does get um, annoying. Now, the, the highlight of the button box, which you're probably staring at here right in the middle, is this gorgeous engine start button. Like, this is something that's like right out of a real car, like just the way it's illuminated and kind of um, the, the the engine start is etched onto here. So it's just like super premium, like this beautiful enclosure, enclosure and just so satisfying when I flip this and I hit the start button, like it, it never gets old for me, honestly. I love being able to start the car myself in something like iRacing. You know, you flip the ignition, hit the engine start, my haptics start to rumble and it's just like never gets old. It's just so much fun and so much added immersion. And it's one of those things like people come over and they sit in the rig and they go, okay, so I'm ready to go. And I, I get them to start the car themselves just because I love seeing people smile when they experience that uh, in a sim rig. So it's just like one of those little things that just is really cool to have. So now the best part here um, as well is setting everything up with this box is like super easy. It just, you know, it's plug and play. And, and a lot of the other boxes on the market are like this as well. They just simply connect to your PC and they include a USB type cable. So the USB is actually on the side here and I actually got an adapter just so that the cable doesn't stick out. That would probably be my only gripe with this box is that when you plug the cable in without this adapter, it's kind of like sticking out so my leg might, you know, hit it. But it depends on where you're putting your button box obviously on your rig, but um, I actually got this L shaped adapter so that I can just run the cable down and then behind the button box. So, um, but yeah, the connection's really nice. Like it's not loose at all. Um, the cable that they include is um, just, you know, a basic cable, nothing crazy, but um, nice to see that they, you know, include the cable so you don't have to go out and purchase anything or be looking for a cable at all. So let's go over just like some of the specifications. Um, so the enclosure dimensions are 154 by 254 by 49 millimeters. So it's, you know, it's not huge, but it's not small. Um, it doesn't have a lot of depth to it, which is nice. So I think most people, if you've got um, a decent sized rig uh, or somewhere to mount this, I, I don't think you should have any issue. Um, what I like as well is the compatibility with mounting. So if you prefer to hard mount it to your system, there's four built-in metric M4 threads on the back. So, and it's a Visa 100 by 100 pattern. So. This is pretty much compatible with like any of the button box mounts that a lot of the sim racing rig companies sell. So like I'm using advanced sim racing's um, button box um, arm basically here and you know, mounting that to, to that is no problem. And then I can, I'm able to adjust the angle and where this sits on the rig. So yeah, I don't think anyone should have any issues with, with mounting it. So just before I wrap up, so like I said, that's included in the package, you have the button box and the USB type cable, um, and that's and that's it. There's no mount or anything included. So what do I what do I think overall? Well, you know, taking a look at the price here on the screen, um, obviously you're probably thinking like that is way too much for a button box. And honestly, I kind of thought the same thing too until I actually received it. Like I remember when I first pulled it out of the box, just kind of feeling the weight and the construction, it was like, wow, this is like something special. So, you know, if you're someone who, you know, really geeks out, really cares about stuff like that, you know, the money spent on it, you, you may not be thinking about it as a big deal too much. 
Um, sure, you could get a, a, a less expensive button box. Um, I've, I've had different button boxes through the years. Um, one of the ones that I actually really enjoyed was from Racebox Sim Racing, which I thought was an extremely well-made product. Um, I just wanted something a little bit different for this rig, for this setup. Um, something was all black. Like I said, have the lights, um, backlit lights as well, um, and just kind of fit the, the look and finish that I was looking for. So um, as far as build quality, like, I mean, it's it's for me, it's worth every penny in terms of the quality of the buttons and the knobs and the switches like nothing feels um, wrong or weird. Um, it, it feels like it's just built to last forever. Like, I don't know how long, you know, I, this isn't a long term review, obviously, but, you know, after using all these buttons over the next few years, but I can just tell just by the way it's built that I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I mean. I highly recommend it if you've got the cash to burn on something like this. Um, it wouldn't be like the first thing I would buy on my sim rig. I would look at probably doing some other upgrades first, but because I have a lot of other things covered, this was kind of like a next thing to to have on this rig. So yeah, I definitely recommend this this button box. They do have a couple of different options, I think, with different like configurations and different lighting, but I'll, I'll post a link to Ignition Control's website. And I'll also put a link to Advanced Sim Racing, which is a Canadian sim racing hardware company that uh, I am affiliated with. And I've bought a lot of products from them before um, and have supported them before we were even affiliate. I highly recommend them. You know, they're the type of people, if you have questions, you can just call and they'll answer anything to do with their, their rigs or their products that they sell. And they sell pretty much all the main um, sim racing brands, including some really high end stuff. So yeah, check them out. I'll have a link below as well to advanced sim racing. I do have an affiliate code, which is um, the sim racing den and you'll receive 5% off anything that's an advanced sim racing branded product. Obviously they can't offer discounts on things like semi cube or uh, other products, um, but you can get 5% off any of the, the chassis, the seats, um, the button box mount that I'm using right now. So anything that's ASR branded, um, you can use my coupon code. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, this is just very straightforward. I don't think there's, you know, I have to do a whole fancy thing on a button box. I think you got, you guys get the point. It's pretty straightforward, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this box, if you're on the fence on it and you want to know something or want me to test something out for you, I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, until the next one, please like the video if you enjoyed it. It definitely helps me out. It does me a huge favor in terms of recommending my content and bringing on new subscribers to the community. And uh, yeah, speaking of subscribing, if you're not subscribed already, um, that's the best way to support me. And I hope you'll stick around uh, for more videos and reviews in the future. So thanks for stopping by. Till the next one, stay safe. Enjoy your racing.